here, we have a clip from our friends over at ESPN's First Take. We're going to talk about some Browns and Bengals action today. And we're going to open up with Ryan Clark's take on Baker Mayfield. Sam, you ready? Sure, let's get to it. All right, let's do it. Roll that clip. From now on, we need to look at Baker Mayfield in a different way. See, what we were looking at him as was the Heisman Trophy winner and the first overall pick. Let's stop that. Let's look at him as the guy who had to walk on to two different teams in college. The guy who wasn't good enough to play at Texas Tech, so he went to Oklahoma mm -hmm. as a walk-on and earned his way. Maybe if we start seeing him there, if we start seeing him from the bottom level of his talent, we can now appreciate the things that he did well. We can appreciate the times that he did excel, the times that he was successful, because we have to now realize that he's not that talented. Wow, I'm glad somebody was able to say it. Uh, you know, looking at that Four Letter Network show, you look at the two co-hosts of that show, we got one guy who refuses to own up that he was wrong about Colin Kaepernick, and then we got the other host that, you know, picked Andre Iguodala to be more clutch at shooting threes than Steph Curry. So I'm glad that Ryan Clark was able to make amends and fall back from all the slurping that was going on for Baker Mayfield. He has not done anything. He has not lived up, not even to being a number one pick. He hasn't lived up to being the top 10, top 15, top 20, damn near a first round QB. He's been handed the keys and he has profitably crashed his car. He already got one coach out of there. He already got one system out of there. Now he's on the way to running a second one into the ground. So the Browns are in trouble and it's thanks to Baker Mayfield. I'm glad Ryan Clark has the cojones, has the acumen to take the L and say, hey, I was wrong. We need to reassess this. I wish the two co-hosts on that Full Letter Network show would do the same. You know, when guys come in with a lot of hype, especially the kind of hype that comes with a number one draft pick, there is going to be a ton expected of you. And as soon as you don't meet those expectations, people are going to lose faith in you real fast. And Sam, let's keep this going into this week's edition of Thursday Night Football. Now we have the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals in a little battle for Ohio action. Both of these teams sort of had a pretty rough start to the season in the first week of games. But this week, they are meeting at the first energy stadium in Cleveland. Sam, who do you like this week? I'm going to have to go with the Browns. I'm going to give the Browns as an organization one more chance. I'm not giving Baker one more chance, but I think the value there at minus five and a half as the home favorite I think you take that. So I'm going to ride with the Browns and the Bengals. The Bengals have a rookie QB, again, another new system. They're trying to rechange everything. They're trying to, like, blow it all up and rebuild anew with Joe Burrow. And that didn't work out so well last week. I mean, you could talk about the A.J. Green push-off. We could talk about that another time. But the Bengals are always going to Bengal. So when it comes to this Thursday night game, I like the Browns here. If they don't do this, if they don't get a dub this Thursday, you could make the case that they could go over until their bye week in week nine. So if there's ever a must win in week two of the NFL, Amanda, it's looking like this Thursday, Browns, Bengals, minus five and a half. The Browns have to and need to get this W. So after all that Mayfield hate, Sam, you are still taking the Browns under five and a half against the Bengals. Not a fan of mixed and madness, I see. But Sam, we're going to stick to the Browns here. Now, this is a team with a lot of hype and a lot of talent. What are your overall thoughts on the Browns this season? They've got Baker. They have OBJ, Nick Chubb. Is this the year of Cleveland? I have a feeling I already know your answer, but go ahead and give us your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, when you look at this team, they were, you know, the, the Bucs had it at eight and a half for total wins this season. And yeah, me and a few of the homies, we smashed that under because, you know, there's no way with Baker Mayfield showing us what he has done last year and already in week one this year running for his life against the Ravens. I don't have any faith in it. I got faith in Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb is a beast. He's a monster. But you can't run him 40 to 50 times a game. They're going to have to rely at some point in Baker Mayfield being able to get it done. And this isn't college. You're not going to be able to take a flag and wave it around and slam it into the, you know, 50-yard line. You can't do that here. You're going to have to hit the throws. He overthrew Juice Landry a few times. He threw behind OBJ a few times. Luckily, Njoku saved him a few times. So Baker Mayfield is under pressure, under the gun. Eight and a half wins, I can't see it. Smash that under. You look at that schedule, I mentioned, they have not a lot of winnable games on paper. 
there's no easy wins here. I mean, they might be able to get something against Joey's Cowboys, but I don't know. Outside of that, that first eight weeks, there's not a lot of automatic W's on this schedule. So eight and a half, I think, is way too much. I think that's free money from the books. Take the under. 